I thought I had the upper limits of chicken flavor figured out. For years, I lived confidently, blissfully thinking I had the truth. And then one day something happened and things have never been the same. I don't know why I did it. I just did it. It might have been a random Instagram post, but I cut the heat in half. I went slow. Did I mention this recipe is both easier and better tasting than your traditional high heat roast chicken? In all the cooking books I read coming up, there was three things that everyone said about roast chicken. Trust it, season it right before you cook, and cook it on high heat, 450. They were fine, delicious. I've done it hundreds of times that way. I don't know what led me to dabble on the dark side, on the slow and low side. I guess I'm reminded of slow smoked chicken in the barbecue setting. The meat is super juicy and shreddy and I just love it. Now I'm feeling kind of crazy. We're gonna gild this, Lily. We're gonna make restaurant style potato puree at home and a little jus from the chicken drips. Sound good? I agree. So let's start with a whole three and a half to four pound chicken. We're gonna open up the bag and set it into a vessel to season it up. To the bird, we're gonna add two teaspoons of poultry seasoning two teaspoons of garlic powder, two teaspoons of black pepper, one teaspoon sugar, and three teaspoons salt. Oh, 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 oh. Want to make sure you're getting into every nook and cranny of this bird, under the wings, on the back, under the legs. We're gonna throw it in the fridge for 24 hours to dry brine. The next day we're gonna pull out and throw into a preheated 285 degree oven. Once our bird is locked and loaded, we're gonna set a time for three hours to keep track of the total cooking, but we're gonna come back in about 90 minutes to take a look. Wait a minute. What do we mean when we say fotisserie chicken? It comes down to three things in my mind. One is we're cooking at a really low temperature, just like a rotisserie in a grocery store. Two, we're doing this dry brine method where we're curing it in the fridge overnight with salt, sugar, seasonings. We're gonna dry out the skin, but also allow the flesh to hold on to its moisture in the oven. Three, poultry seasoning. Sage, marjoram, thyme. They're kind of like the three amigos of poultry cookery. I really only use poultry seasoning for two things, Thanksgiving stuffing and this rotisserie chicken. I'm gonna scoot over to the oven real quick. It's been about 90 minutes. I'm gonna take a look at my bird, make sure that it's looking good. As you can see here, the skin's starting to dry out. It's starting to take on some color. It's safe to say it's about halfway there. We're definitely gonna need the additional 90 minutes. All right, let's make some potato puree. To get that restaurant quality potato puree, we need four things. A fine mesh strainer or a chinois, a pusher, in this case, I got a one ounce ladle, a spatula, and a container to hold the potatoes. For this much bird, three potatoes is probably plenty. To these three potatoes, we're also gonna be adding in one cup of heavy cream and one stick of butter. I'm gonna use the worst peeler in the world that I got at Target for $2.99 because I lost my favorite peeler, the Kuhn Rakan. I highly recommend if you don't have one of these, you go out and get it. It's the only peeler you need to have. So we're gonna peel these potatoes down and cut them into medium large size chunks and scoot them into a four to six cup saucepan and cover with water. We're gonna bring it over to the range, turn it on high, and bring these to a boil. About 30 minutes later, our potatoes should be nice and tender. I'm gonna use a cake tester here to gauge our doneness. If you feel any resistance, give them a little bit more time. When it comes to potato puree, you want your potatoes totally blown out. You want them 100% tender. If they're not cooked all the way, once you pass them through the chinois, they're gonna get gummy. Okay, so it's been three hours. I'm gonna check my bird. It's looking good. We're gonna pull it out and give it an extended rest. I'm checking the temperature just for good measure. I know it's gonna be well over what I need. As you can see here, the breast is reading about 190 degrees. That might seem really hot, but when we've cooked it this slow and this gently, it really isn't an issue. The breast meat's not gonna be dry. We took the extra step of salting it the day before, so it's really held on to a lot of its moisture. Back to our potatoes, we're gonna melt our stick of butter and drain our potatoes. Once our potatoes are returned to the pot, we're gonna add our butter and stir to mix. 
I do want to mention, if you don't have a chinois or a fine mesh strainer to pass these potatoes through, using a potato ricer is fine. You're just going to have a little bit more of a rustic texture. It's totally cool. We want to take it to the absolute most pro level. The potato puree is undeniably amazing. Once we've got our potatoes good and smashed and the butter is evenly dispersed, we're going to season with some salt and we're going to pour over our cream. After a couple of stirs here, you can see it gets a little bit loose and then tightens back up. We want to make sure that that cream is getting stirred all the way in, otherwise when we go to pass our potatoes, all that liquid's going to run right through and then we're going to have something that's really thick and hard to pass. Alright, so we've got our potatoes seasoned where we want them. We're going to head over to the chinois, grab our pusher, aka the one ounce ladle, and we're just going to pass these through. It requires a little bit of elbow grease, but trust me guys, it is so worth it. These potatoes are amazing. Next time on Thanksgiving or for Christmas, do yourself a favor, make these for your family, you're absolutely gonna blow their mind. I'm at the point now where I have to make them every Thanksgiving and every Christmas because people are so crazy for them. After all that hard work, you can see here we've got an incredibly creamy, super smooth potato puree. We're gonna wrap that with plastic and set it aside. We're gonna move on to our pan sauce. For this sauce, we're gonna need our roasting pan from the chicken, some chicken stock. This is some roasted stock I made last week and put in the freezer. One tablespoon of butter, and one tablespoon of all-purpose flour. We're gonna start by taking about a cup of the stock and putting it on the roasting pan. We're gonna use a wooden spoon to scrape up the fond. As most of you know, fond is the brown bits that hit the bottom of the pan and caramelize. That's where the most concentrated chicken flavor is. We're gonna put in the work to scrape that up. This is gonna be the thing that makes our sauce special. To get started cooking the sauce, we're gonna heat our butter in a 10 inch saute pan and we're gonna add our one tablespoon of flour and whisk to build a roux. This is just a little bit of roux to hold this sauce together. It's not gonna be a full on gravy. It's gonna be a little bit more of a loosey goosey chicken jus with tons of flavor. I don't want something floury and soupy. I want it to have a nice light texture. Once the flour is cooked out and we're bubbly, we're gonna deglaze with a little bit of stock, maybe about one more cup until that thickens up. Then we're gonna add in all of our chicken drippings. Whisk that in till it's well combined and bring it to a hard simmer. We're gonna reduce this sauce until it coats the back of a spoon. That's 60 seconds to two minutes and that is it. The term for when a sauce coats the back of a spoon is called nappe. It's a French thing, don't ask me about it, but that's just what we're going for. We want something that's just gonna stand up on the plate a little bit. All right, our potatoes are made and our sauce is done, so it's time to carve this rested bird. If it's fully rested, a ton of juice shouldn't run out. We're gonna take off both breasts and both legs and just leave it in four big pieces. Any juice that comes out during this time, we can pour into our sauce, stir that in, and then we're gonna plate this thing up. All right, so there you have it. Homemade, slow roasted, faux tisserie style chicken with some potato puree and a little bit of chicken jus. This recipe takes a little bit of time, but it's not super difficult. If you're stuck inside with your loved ones, your friends, your lover, spoil them. Make this recipe, open up something bubbly and eat it outside. If you got some value out of this video and you like what we're doing here, please hit subscribe, tell a friend. See you next time.